Hi, my name is Dan. Welcome to my shop. Gosh, it's been a while since I've been able to put a video up, but uh, yeah, that's kind of what I wanted to talk about today. I want to make some changes to this channel and uh, well, hold on. Don't freak out. It's, it's not going to be bad. Okay. I promise you it's going to be good. It's going to be good for both me and you. I'll show you what I'm talking about here, but first let's talk about this soon. Why is there a crock pot on my workbench? It's kind of funny. seems like my wife, if something is kind of interfering with her space, it ends up in my workspace somewhere. So anyways, let me move this for a second. <clears throat> okay. There we go. Uh, anyways, yeah, I wanted to talk a little bit about the channel. Uh, but first of all, let's talk about the Rebel. Uh, as you can see in the background, I was doing the final sanding on it. And that's uh, getting it ready for covering at this point. What I wanted to do is there is sheeting that's on the top of the fuselage and sheeting that's on the bottom of the fuselage. And what I wanted to do is kind of take and uh, just kind of even those up so that they were flush with the sides. I wanted to make sure that the ends of the sheeting match perfectly to the sides. And that makes a really sharp pointed angle right at the uh, edge of the, of the fuselage. And so what I did after that was I kind of beveled it. You see, I like to have a fuselage that's got that kind of rounded look to it instead of having one with sharp edges on it. I just think it looks more aerodynamic and more like an airplane actually. So uh, I went ahead and rounded those off so that they'll have nice kind of dull corners on it as the, as the covering goes over it. And then after that, took it over to Mark's house. Mark is going to put the covering on it and make it all look sharp. And he's really good. He's just, he's just really good at covering. He's fast at it. It would take me forever to do that kind of work and it would not look as good. So I wanted him to go ahead and cover it for me and worked out a deal. We're going to, we've got some other modeling projects we're going to work on together. But anyways, uh, I asked him to let me know when he was getting close to being done, because I do want to bring the camera over to his place so that you could see, you know, how some of that covering gets applied and how he does it. It's got a very good technique to it and we'll see hopefully i could get some good footage of that so anyways but let's talk about the channel for a minute um first of all uh it's been a year and a half since i started the rebel and really to tell you if i hadn't been you know videotaping uh videotaping it's not really taping i guess uh, but if i hadn't been videoing the whole thing um, then it would have probably taken me maybe two months to put that plane together from start to finish. And that's, you know, spending a couple hours maybe every night after work just to kind of continue to progress on it. And, you know, that's, that's fine. And I'm, it's not that I'm saying, you know, it, it, it was holding me up by showing it because I really want to show all of the different steps involved in, in putting a scratch built airplane together. And that was the goal of the, of the series that I've put together so far, but it has kind of uh, held up my hobby the way that I enjoy the hobby too, because uh, by taping or taping, there I go again, it's not taping, it's videoing by videoing every step and making a conscious effort to make sure that you're able to see every one of those steps, um, it's, it's slowed things up quite a bit. So I'm a year and a half into that plane. We're still not done with it yet, although it's getting pretty close at this point. But you know, for, for from the standpoint, I, I, in this hobby, I'm usually working on several different projects all at once. In fact, let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay, we're at the secret location of my secret storage lair. So, it's got a retinal scanner so that only I can get into it as long as I have this key. It's hard to unlock a lock. One-handed. It's a secret key that only I have that lets me in. And the retinal scanner. So this is my secret storage hanger. Uh, the truth of the matter is anytime you got a whole bunch of kits stored up, well, you need to have space to store them in. 
and this is my area right here. So as you can see along that back wall there, there's about, oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine fuselages. These are planes that are, the one that's complete is the P-40. That's the camouflaged and metal paint job in the middle there. That's, that's the only one right now that is fully functional, ready to rock. But everything else around it here is either partially or it's in the rehab stage or something like that. And so these are the projects that I have. Um, all kinds of different things, actually. Uh, over in the corner there, that balsa one, that is a uh, Corsair. That's a 100-inch Corsair that I'm partially through. And if you look against the wall back in the corner, there is a... Uh, LA-7. It's a David Anderson LA-7 with a huge wing. And there is the huge wing down there actually on the floor. You can see it's a three-piece wing and so the centerpiece is right there and it's got the two outer pieces there. Huge airplane when it's going to be done. Uh, the gray one in the middle is a P-40 from Yellow that I'm going to be uh, putting together here. I had a friend of mine put it, assemble most of it, but it's got some painting and priming and detailing to go through yet. Uh, let's see here. we got a bear cat right here. Uh, that's got a story behind it. I'll tell it to you someday. And then we've got a um, ESM, uh, what's called a Hayate, Japanese uh, type aircraft. Kind of looks like a Zero, but it isn't. Uh, looks more like what they call a Tony. And then I got my Spacewalker. This was my very first gas engine airplane. And it needs some rehab. I really kind of want to get that one back up in the air. And, you know, I've got all my other parts here. So here's a big shelf that is full of uh, different parts for these planes. So each plane has like retracts. It's got other components that need to be put into it. And then you get up here and, you know, this is my, oh, let me go up a little higher here. Up here is the shelf that has uh, a good quantity of, uh, it's got some engines up there. It's got some other parts for the planes. Um, there is a couple of complete kits up there that are, you know, going to be uh, stick built. Uh, that I'll, that I'll come up with in the future. And uh, let's see here. Other than that, I've got my wing rack right here where I'm able to rack up the wings. I'll tell you, the last storage unit I had, everything was just kind of on the floor. And I got so much hanger rash on everything. It just It's very disappointing. So I wanted to, when I took on this smaller unit, I wanted to make sure that I had a place for everything and everything in its place. And I think it does uh, much better in helping so that I can... Um, you know, keep this stuff from getting all uh, banged up before I've even got it assembled. So that's pretty much the unit. So uh, some other things, I guess, you know, it, with all these different projects, that's kind of the way that I like to work this hobby. I like to be able to take one of these in and start working on it. And then inevitably I get to a point where it's kind of like, well, you know, maybe I am uh, get burned out on it and want to do something else. Or maybe I get to a point where I get stuck and I don't know what to do next. So then what I do is I'll take that airplane back here, put it back in with the other ones, and I'll uh, go in and pull up a different one and bring it in there. I guess if I had it all set the way that would be the perfect way to have this hobby in my life, I would have like a big uh, warehouse-like thing with like six tables around it. And each table would have each different project on it, maybe six, I'll probably need eight. But anyways, each table would have its own project on it. And I would just move a tool cart uh, from table to table as I needed it. That would be just, that would be awesome. I mean, that would be the perfect way to go. But I don't have those conditions. I don't have the money for a warehouse or those tables. You know, I just don't have that kind of space, time or money to to put a, a, a production. And, you know, it's kind of silly too. It's just a hobby. It's not like I'm doing it for money. I need to have a production line and stuff like that. So it's all for me. Um, but anyways, it would be that would be the ultimate way to do it if I could. But I can't, so I won't. Um, what I'll do is I'll just continue to do what I do is bring these home one by one and work on them. And as each one of them comes across the table, you'll get to see it as it is. So we'll work on a few things. Maybe you'll learn a few new skills and some tips. Or maybe you got something to help me because sometimes I get stuck and I don't know what to do. That's just the way it goes. But anyways, back to the shop. Okay, so I took you to the storage unit and showed you all of my top secret projects I'm working on right now. In all, there are probably, from what you could see, 
there was probably about five different airplanes that I'm working on all at once. Plus there's kits and other parts for other planes in there. Probably, I don't know, there's probably about another two or three in there. So I've got lots of projects lined up, but what I did pretty much is because I wanted to show how to do a scratch build. Um, the whole year I have spent doing nothing but the Rebel, which is great. I want you to learn how to do the, um, how to do the different scratch building techniques and, and not be afraid or intimidated by building from plants. That was the whole goal of that. And I think it's worked pretty well because a lot of you have responded back to me that you're either A, going to do something like this, B, picked out a set of plans, or C, you have something going somewhere and this kind of inspired you to bring it back to the table and get to work on it again. Maybe you burned out on it or something like that and now you're kind of inspired to go again. I think that's great. And I think that that's definitely reaching some of the goals that I was trying to, to uh, attain. I wanted to, have, to encourage other people to get working on uh, model airplanes, whether it be scratch build or a kit or, or you know something like that, even an ARF modifying them up. So anyways, I guess what I'm getting at is uh, as we come to the conclusion of the Rebel, I'm probably not going to do another scratch build project from begin to end, but rather what I would like to do is take all of these other projects that I'm usually working on and have them get a little bit of time on the table. So for instance, the next thing we're gonna be working on is a decathlon ARF that I've been working on. I bought it about five years ago and uh, got it all ready to go, just about to the point of uh, taking it out to the field and flying it, but had some serious problems with noise from the engine. I don't, it's a 2.4 radio, it shouldn't have you know, engine problems, but um, it was creating noise and I just didn't want to fly it with the uh, surfaces jittering out of my control. So anyways, that's kind of what uh, got held up there. So I've uh, put a new engine on it and then I just died in my storage unit. It was right there with all the rest of that stuff. Just, you know, it just got held up and I haven't been able to get back to it because I've been so busy building the Rebel. But like I said, what I want to do from this point on is I want to start bringing all the other airplane projects that I'm working on. And so you could see the different areas of, uh, and there's going to be lots of tips and steps and recommendations that I can give to you uh, just working on my regular fleet. And there's some really neat stuff coming. I really like scale airplanes. That's my thing. But I'm not so super into it that it needs to be an exact working replica. I just kind of like them to look like a scale airplane. So we've got several planes coming up that are going to be, you know, painting jobs. They're going to be cosmetic work to them. They're going to be weathering. They're going to be detailing and stuff like that. That's pretty cool. But I also have some other things like I've got one of these projects. Uh, it's a uh, plane that comes from flight test, which is a very uh, it's, a, it's a great group of people that are encouraging, especially young people, to get into the hobby. And they've made a whole line of airplanes that are very uh, easy, made of different type of material. It's like a foam, it's a, it's a foam with paper stuck to it. And they build these planes like, okay, the one I bought is the plane that I love. It's my favorite airplane. It's a Corsair. And so I'm going to be building that one. I'll do that on video so that you can see how that goes. Now there's lots of videos that they make that show you how to put it together, but I'm gonna take my whack at it and see. Mark's already built a uh, P-47 from the same company. It's good stuff. I mean, it, it's gonna be a lot of fun, but I'll show you, they, they package it up beautifully uh, as far as having the completeness of everything right being there. Um, Anyways, that's kind of what my plan is. Uh, now that I've kind of reached a point where I'm what you would call semi-retired, I'm gonna be working you know, at my day-to-day -day job less and less. So I'm gonna pick up two more days a week that I could be doing production work for uh, the channel. And I plan on using this, uh, this uh, time to hopefully put out, I still wanna get back to my, I'm putting out one video weekly of what's going on here in the shop. So that's the goal. We'll see how well we do. But uh, yeah, I've, I've noticed that over the last year, it's been a, it's been a fun haul. It's been, uh, I've met and talked to a lot of you and uh, it's, it's been really nice to have that kind of contact with other modelers. And I'm glad that I'm inspiring some of you. And you know, some of you have also offered a lot of ideas and I'm gonna start trying because 
That's the whole thing behind modeling, is sharing what you know and passing it on to somebody else. So if it helps them, there, there's another modeler that you're gonna be able to go flying with or something like that. It's, it's, it's cool to have that. Now there's a guy, and I want you to look him up. His name is Greg Hahn, H-A-H-N, I think. Anyways, Greg Hahn, um, he used to work for Hobbyco a long, long time ago, back before Tower kind of you know, went under. And uh, he's a fantastic modeler. I think he's won Top Gun a couple of times. Top Gun is arguably the world's biggest event as far as radio control airplanes go. This is where they, the best of the best get together and they build these scale airplanes and they fly them for points. There's points for flying well, there's points for building well. So you combine the two things and it's, it's like the biggest event in the world. And he's won that a couple of times. He's a very sharp guy. I saw an interview one time where he was uh, talking about building scale models and stuff and he said when he got into it nobody was willing to help him because everything was kind of top secret, black magic, all that kind of stuff. Nobody wanted to talk about how they were building these planes because it was a competitive edge. And he said um, I always had trouble finding my answers so I vowed that if I ever got good at this that I would if somebody asked me a question, I'd give them an answer. I'd, I'd help them to, so that uh, they could progress on in the hobby too. That's a pretty cool thing. And if you look him up, um, he's actually made some videos on some, I mean, he's really a super builder. So he makes videos every now and then to tell you how he gets certain things done, how um, things that he's learned to make uh, building easier, better, and, and a lot more higher, uh, I don't know what the word you're looking for. He's just a, a, like a master craftsman. Uh, and so that's something you wanna check out. But he's a great, uh, great person. I have actually asked him a couple of questions over time. I'm sure he wouldn't remember it, but uh, I've asked him questions and he indeed does respond. Very nice guy. He's on Facebook and I think he might, eh, I don't think he's doing Instagram, but I know that Greg Hahn is on Facebook. Look him up if you get a chance. And uh, I think you'd be really impressed with the work he does. Right now, he's really into World War I type airplanes. World War I airplanes are the masterpieces of the hobby. I mean, it was such a, uh, the, they have all kinds of belt cranks on them. They have all kinds of wires on them. They have like metal stanchions that they use to hold the wings apart. It's just a, it was a great time in the air, aviation industry. Um, when, when they were using World War I airplanes. I mean, they're very delicate, but they're tough. And the people that flew them, oh my gosh, you gotta have the ultimate respect for them because they are a very hard plane to fly. And that's what he's chosen now. He's building them, which is hard to do. And then he's also flying them, which if you got any kind of wind, they're the ones that are <laughs> all over the air. So anyways, um, that's, I, I guess I just wanted to touch on that. A couple changes to the channel. And we hope to be bringing in some new stuff here. Like I said, I'm going to be putting that uh, decathlon up here on the bench here shortly. And we'll get to work on that. But uh, hang with me here. We're going to get better on this. And I just want this channel to become uh, more interactive as far as conversation goes. Uh, and hopefully having a little more time to dedicate toward this channel. I'm going to make it a little bit better for you. And that's my, that's my promise. I hate the word promise. I'm gonna give it a try, okay? I'm gonna do as hard as I can because I really miss flying. And I feel like uh, I've spent so much time here in the shop in the last year when I, you know, and I still wasn't producing aircraft for flying. So I need to get some planes that I can get up into the air. And then that Rebel's gonna be one of them, but it'd be nice to have a couple other ones so that I'm not flying that foamy. Remember episode one? I think it was episode one. Maybe it was episode two, that foamy. I'm getting tired of it. I mean, it's a fun airplane and everything, but it's time to fly something with a little bit of... I need to fly something that's burning dinosaur juice. That's just the way I feel about it. Anyways, uh, I'll talk to you later on, and thanks for tuning in today. And uh, yeah, get building. Do, 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 do. What the heck is this? <laughs>